In this lesson, we're gonna cover a few different cheats that can be very useful when you're playing consistent 16th notes in your lead hand. If you're playing a song and its tempo is a little quick, or if it's a long song and you just need to build in some breaks, in this lesson we're gonna cover some very strategic little things that we can do to build in some space for that lead hand. As I've mentioned in some of the previous lessons, playing consistent 16th notes in my lead hand was a bit of a challenge for me to develop. I had had a lot of rudimental training and I had played a lot of New Orleans funk, but all of those things are hand to hand and I hadn't directly addressed strengthening my 16th notes in my lead hand. So I set out to really develop this and in Academy Lesson 41, we cover three different ways to approach this and there are other ways, but you can really start with these three ways and figure out what's comfortable for you maybe a hybrid of those three ways, or maybe there's another way that you discover, but I do really suggest that you start to strengthen these 16th notes and you figure out a way that you can do these that is comfortable for you. Right now I'm gonna demonstrate a straightforward 16th note groove where I'm playing all of the 16th notes. There are gonna be some grace notes built in here, and then after this we'll start getting into some strategic places where we can give that hand a break. I hope you're enjoying this video, and right now I am offering a special rate on subscriptions to my online drum school, Stanton Moore Drum Academy. So if you have been thinking about signing up for the Academy, take advantage of this special rate. Just click the link in the description, and here you go, now back to the video. One of my favorite cheats is to leave out the E on the hi-hat, and we can replace that with a snare note, and we can do this on beats one and three. One of the things I like about leaving this E out is that it allows you to play an accent on the and of one. And that adds a nice lilt to the beat and it creates a very natural propulsion within that beat. Also what's cool about it is that you can accent that and of one with the bass drum at the same time. And it just adds a nice drive to this beat. Let's take a look at some other notes that we can leave out. I like to leave out the ah as well, and you can do this on beats two and four. Now, if we leave out beats two and four on the hi-hat, we arrive at the right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left sticking which is number 33 in George Lawrence Stone stick control. Super useful sticking, and this might be the ultimate cheat for consistent 16th notes on the hi-hat. I heard Joe Percaro, Jeff Percaro's dad, tell this story where he was playing percussion on a session with Shelly Mann, and the producer wanted Shelly to play consistent 16th notes on the hi-hat. And Shelly was having a little bit of an issue making it feel right. So Joe approached Shelly and said, do you mind if I show you something? You know, very timidly, of course, because this is Shelly Mann. And Joe showed Shelly this sticking, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left. And Shelly played that sticking to get this feel and he nailed the session. The producers were happy and this sticking and Joe Picaro showing it to Shelly saved the day. Joe has called this sticking the rock and roll paradiddle. It is number 33 in George Lawrence Stone's stick control and David Garibaldi has used it to great effect as have many other people. I did a whole lesson on this earlier in the Academy Lesson Series, so check that out for a more in-depth examination into this sticking. But this sticking is a wonderful way to cheat the consistent 16th notes on the hi-hat. 
You don't always have to replace one of the notes on the hi-hat with a ghost note. You could replace it with an accent. And Charlie Watts and Jim Keltner have popularized this concept of not playing the hi-hat when you play a backbeat on the snare. So let's try applying that right now with these 16th notes. Now in keeping with not playing the hi-hat on beats two and four, let's now also not play the hi-hat on the E's of one and three. If we stick with this idea of not playing two and four on the hi-hat and then leaving out the E's, and then if we leave out the ahs, then we arrive at that right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left sticking again. A very effective way to approximate consistent 16th notes is to use what I call the Bernard Purdy hand system or hand pattern. So we're gonna take a look at that now. What you can do is you add the E on the snare drum, and then you add a chatter note. I call these chatter notes because that's what Clyde Stubblefield would call them. You can call them grace notes, but you add the E after beats two and four as well. So that fills in and makes nice consistent 16th notes when you're playing what is essentially a straightened out jazz ride cymbal pattern on the hi-hat the one and a two and a three and a four, that'll stay consistent. And then you're adding in the E's on one and three and the E's on two and four. Let's take a look at this hand pattern just by itself. Now we're gonna add a mambo bass drum pattern underneath that. You can put any bass drum pattern that you want, but right now we're gonna start off with that mambo bass drum pattern. Now we're gonna add the ahs of beats two and four under this pattern. What I love about this pattern is that we have some of Jabo Stark's ghost notes in here. We also have Clyde Stubblefield's chatter notes. Those are the notes right after the backbeat, and that's what he liked to call them. So we put those notes right after the backbeat, and you add that in with some of Jabo's ghost notes, and then you also have the straightened out jazz ride cymbal pattern in the right hand, and we're combining a few different elements in this to create a very cool textured hand pattern. That is what I call the full Bernard Purdy hand pattern or hand system. And this hand system works great to approximate consistent 16th notes. And you can put all kinds of bass drum patterns underneath this, but this is a wonderful hand pattern to approximate these consistent 16th notes. I like to put the Mr. Magic bass drum pattern underneath this as well. That's the same bass drum pattern that shows up in a lot of go-go music as well. This is not feeling like go-go, this is much straighter, but they are similar patterns. And right now I'm gonna add in what I call the super go-go bass drum pattern, which is adding some notes, and this gets a little bit more challenging, but we can work towards this so that if you can play this, you can play a lot of bass drum patterns that you're gonna to wanna to put under this. Thank you for checking out this lesson. If you dug it, please like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Also hit that notification bell so you will be notified when I am putting out new lessons. Also, I have a 300 page ebook that I am running a special offer on. And to take advantage of that offer, just click the link in the description. And all of the notation from this lesson is in that ebook, as well as 40 other lessons. And it's a total of over 300 pages. And I'm very proud of it. And it's a lot of the drumming information that I have compiled over my 30 year career in drumming. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I'll see y'all down the line.